Welcome to the walkthrough of the 2003 Sunseeker. This is going to show you everything how to use the unit from inside to outside. All mechanical, electrical, everything you will need to know. Pay close attention to all the details and remember if you have any questions feel free to contact us. Okay, I'm just going to show you the engine compartment first in order to open the hood for the engine. The hood release is going to be down here on the left hand side down there. Just pull it. Right there. All right, so basic engine compartment, nothing fancy here. You have your battery right here. This works your engine battery, just like it would your car. It does not run everything else in the unit, okay? So if you needed a jump start or something like that or check your battery, it's right here. You have washer fluid right here. I do have extra washer fluid in one of the bays. I'll show you that later. Here's to fill your oil. Here's to check your transmission. If you don't know how to check a transmission, read a manual, please. Um, to check your oil, it's way down here, this little yellow thing down here. That's where you'll check your oil. Check the dipstick, please. Every time you go to fill up or stop or do anything, make sure you've got enough oil. I'm not saying that these things burn oil, but they could. You never know. It's always your responsibility. Every time you check your unit uh, or go to fill it up for gas or anything like that, please take the time to check your oil. And always you have to let it sit for 15, 20 minutes before you check it. But it is your responsibility. And everything else here is pretty standard. Nothing else too fancy. Let's go ahead and walk around the side. All right, so this is the driver's side of the unit. You have a handful of storage bays underneath. Any bay that does not have a sticker or a label on it, feel free to use. If there's stuff already in it, it may be the owner's, I'm not sure, but you're welcome to use any of the storage bays. This particular unit does not have locks on the bays, but anytime you use them, please make sure that they are always latched when you're driving. You do not want them flying open. The wind will catch them. They'll flip off. They'll break. You got to pay for that. Now, right here is our generator. You should never have to come outside and mess with this or do anything with this, but I'm just showing you where it's at. It's labeled. It's down here. If you have to manually start it for any reason, this is where you would come outside. You would have to open the panel. There's two latches here, an open, open, That'll pull your panel off and there's a way to prime it and manually start it out here. Double check the manual on the inside of the unit, read over it, or again, call if you have any questions. So again, there's your generator. Always make sure that things are locked no matter what. This is just a storage bay. Right here is your hot water tank. You, again, you should never have to come out of here. You should never have to mess with it. But if for any type of reason, if, I, if you had to look at it, if tech, if you call somebody up tech support and they're like, where's it at, blah, blah, blah. This is where it's at. It's on the driver's side. Then moving right along, here's your fuel. Again, driver's side, fuel, gas only. This is not a diesel unit. Please only use gas. You can use regular unleaded, but if you are going through the mountains at higher altitudes, please, you're probably going to have to put in a higher octane, especially if you take it from Colorado to Arizona, you're going to need a higher octane because you're going to be down back towards sea level. This will help avoid something that's called vapor lock. It has happened to some units. It's not any problem with the engine or the unit. It is just lack of oxygen going over the Eisenhower tunnel, the pass on I-70. And yeah, you just need a higher octane and you'll be fine. So just a heads up. Anyways, gas right here. Down here, this is our sewer and water hookups. So pay close attention to this stuff. This is just your water system, city water connection. This is a direct hookup. If you're at a park or a campground, or even if you're at somebody's house, you hook a hose directly up to this and you have pressure just like you would in your own house. Okay? For the city connection. For, the city connection. For this is just to fill up your reservoir, your fresh water tank. Nothing more about it. So you get full fresh water when you leave. Make sure you bring it full when you come back and that's how you fill it up. You can leave it run forever. You'll know it's overflowing because it'll start running on the ground somewhere and that's when you know you're full. Just seal it up and you're done, okay? And then of course, down below is your septic. Down below, we have your black and your gray. You can leave your gray run and open all the time if you're at a park or a campground. It doesn't matter. The gray comes from your, your freshwater tank, so it comes from taking a shower or using the sinks, all right? 
and the valves are always closed always make sure they're closed before you ever take this thing off because you don't want things running out which on you which close, which open? close push close open pull okay and same, with the black. same with the black now when you go to dump your tanks you need to always leave your black closed you can check your levels on the inside i'll show you how to do that but you always want to make sure that your black is closed it has to biodegrade and break down so that way it's easier to flush but when you do go to dump it, you need to make sure that there's enough gray water in the tank to flush out the black. So how that works is we're going to take off the lid. Remember, have your gloves, just like so. And then the hose for this is actually in the bumper. So if you follow me over here, just pop the cap off right here. Pop your cap off, take your hose out. Again, always have your gloves. I use two hands because you never know if anybody has left this thing clean or not. You don't want it dumping all over you. Trust me, you don't. And it's just a twist lock. Pretty easy, pretty basic. Just put it on, boom. Make sure it's nice and tight. This end obviously goes into the hole wherever you're dumping it. We don't have a hole here to show you, but you would make sure that obviously gravity is working. You don't want to be up on a hill or something. You want to make sure that the water can flow and go right in the hole. Make sure this thing is nice and secure in the hole where it's supposed to be because the pressure will come out. And I swear if it's not, it will go everywhere. Trust me, I know. All right. Now, when you go to flush, it's always black first. You pull your black lever let it drain. Once you hear that it's done, close it. When that's done, you flush it out with your gray, pull the lever open, let it drain. When that one's done, you close it, and then you should be clean. Again, then you just unscrew this, take it off. It's gonna probably be dirty. Be careful. You wanna lift the hose up, let it drain, flow the rest of it out. And then when you're all done, two hands, and just put it back. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Okay. And then just make sure, always put your lid back on. And voila. And that's how you use your septic. Okay, right here is your electric. This is where you plug in, the way that this works. To get power to your unit, you have one of two ways. It's either gonna be the generator or it's gonna be what's called park cable. You plug in. This is a 30 amp system. Keep that in mind. Most campgrounds and places you go will have 30 amp. Three outlets or three prongs for your 30 amp system. Now, if you wanted to charge a unit or you're at a friend's house and you want to power and you don't want to use your generator, what you do is you take this, plug it into this end that I provide and you only use my extensions. You do not use some other kind of extension cable. These are heavy gauge. Please use my extensions, okay? These will support 15 amp, not 30. The adapters on the end, you just plug it in. like so, and then you plug that into the garage or wherever you need to, that will help charge your batteries, that will charge your unit, that'll give you power to the unit, okay? Now, if you're running the generator, you have to have this plugged in to complete the cycle. That will give you power to the unit when the generator is on. If you're like, hey, I'm running the generator, but I've got no power, double check and make sure that this is plugged in. Also, your hose for your water and city water connection is right here. It's a white hose. It's stored in the electric bay, okay? So you've got your extension cable here, your adapter, your park cable, and your hose. All right, this is the back of the unit. Nothing really to it. You have a ladder. Yes, you can climb on the ladder. Use it at your own discretion. You cannot come back and sue me if you fall off this ladder. That's your own fault.
all right? And the last thing is, you do have a hitch. All the units have a hitch. If you want to tow something, let me know. It's just $25. You can tow anything you want. Standard hitch, two inch receiver, okay? All right, so let's move on over to the other side. Nothing too special over here. I'll just show you the quick basics. You do have your storage bays right here. The only thing particular, there's no label on this because you should never have to deal with this, but these are your batteries for the cabin, for the unit, not for the engine. Okay, they're down here. So if for some reason you can't start your generator or you're not showing any voltage on the meter, uh, you may have to jump start these, check these batteries, whatever. Again, you should never have to do this, but this is where they are. Now, you have an awning. All units have an awning, but you are not allowed to touch it. You are not allowed to use it, okay? Per the insurance companies, you cannot use the awnings. They are too costly to repair. They get ripped, they get shredded. People do not know how to use them. I am sorry. If you were expecting to use the awning, you cannot, okay? Fair enough. I don't want to charge you. Good? Good. All right. Again, more storage. This is the back end of your refrigerator. Again, you should never have to mess with this, but that's all that that panel is. It's for the back side of your fridge. All of your supplies are going to be right down here. It's labeled supplies. In here, you will have your latex gloves. You will have a wash for your bugs. This helps a lot. You usually have a quart of oil and your bug wash. Everything is down here. So just know that ahead of time, you should never have any issues with this. If you're low, just let me know and I'll replace it. If anything you have to buy or replace or something like that, just keep your receipt and I can take care of you, all right? Next one over is your propane. Again, it's labeled propane or LPG. Down here, you will never have to fill this yourself. You have to take it to a place to have them fill, fill it. And when they do, unit has to be shut off everybody's got to be out of the vehicle just know it's on the passenger side where you fill your propane and they will take care of it and then you you're off and you're good nothing else on this side this should cover the passenger side of the rv okay here's your door you always have two keys i try to keep all my key systems universal on all my units your pink key is your deadbolt for your side door I have no idea why RVs do this, but every single one of them has two locks on the side door. Don't know why, I don't get it. Pink key, deadbolt. That will unlock the unit, then the little black key will open the doors. Okay, the inside of the unit, pretty cut and dry. I'm not gonna show you all the things, just what's important, all right? If you come right back to the bedroom, this particular unit, has a slide in the back, right here on the wall, it says in and out. So all we do is we push the button out. And voila, it's out. You know, cause it makes that sound. It's all the way out. Don't over crank it. You'll over crank the motor. You have a vent uh, or not a vent, but you have a, um, a skylight up in here. They do not have covers. So please, when you're driving, make sure that these are closed. You can open them when you're stopped, but make sure that they are closed when you are driving. Lights, lights everywhere. You got lights right here. The way that the shades work, these have singles and that's it. All your windows are pretty much the same. They've got their locks, screens. Make sure that they're locked. This is your emergency exit. Okay, you just, I'm not gonna do it. You pull the levers, boom, you kick it out. This is where your emergency exit is located in the rear, okay? Okay, your bed should always be made. I'll send you an email letting you know if, the, if you want the bed made or not. Some people don't want the bed made because they bring their own sheets. That's fine, I don't care, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. But your bedding should always be located in this closet somewhere. I'll show you the bedding for the rest of the unit for the other beds. Down below, right next to the bed, right down here is your fuels, fuse panel. Now your fuse panel, just right here. And this is not an uncommon thing. Fuses blow, you also have a breaker down here. It works just like your house. If you have too many things plugged in and you're drawing too much ampage, check your breaker. If your AC is not working all of a sudden or the TV or something goes out, check your breaker. Make sure that these things are all on, okay? And then your fuse panel for the unit inside is right here. Hopefully you should never have to mess with this, but on occasion people will plug in too many things like a hair dryer and a TV and a stereo all into the same outlet and yes, you'll, you'll, blow a, you'll pop your breaker. 
not a big deal. All right. Your shower is right here, right here. Just make sure it's locked when you're driving. That way the doors doesn't come swing open and it breaks. Just open it up. Oh, boom. Full on shower in there. You also, all, all the units have Swiffers in them. So this is easy to clean your floors. Feel free to use it. Nothing else too fancy there. Again, lock the unit. Across from the shower is the bathroom and the uh, toilet. So you, you have your vanity, your bathroom. Again, you have a fan up here. There's a button right there to turn it on. Just always make sure that the vent is closed when you're driving. The way that the toilet works, if you have direct hookup, then you'll have instant water. You don't need to use the pump. If you don't, you'll have to flip the pump on. I'll show you where that switch is at. And that'll give you water to your toilet and everything else. Just a standard toilet, nothing fancy. When you flush, it's just a push down lever. Water will run from there and flood the toilet. And that's it. Now you have little drop-ins. I will usually do this as a service for you before you take off. Always use, I also provide toilet paper. Always use only marine, boat, safe, whatever. It has to be septic safe. That's the only toilet paper you can use if you have to replenish it, all right? The other thing, here's your little drop-ins. It just takes one of these. Really? <laughs> I don't know if it's open or closed. Just one of these little packets. Don't pop them. And you just throw it in the toilet. You put some water down the toilet with this and you're good. The only time you'll ever need to use this is when you flush the black tank. Now again, on the start of your trip, I will drop one in there for you. And then as your trip continues, if you have to dump the black tank, just make sure you put another one of these little packets in so that way it breaks down all of your sewage. Yeah, and these little pouches, you don't have to open them or take the, the bag just goes down as it is. It's all biodegradable. You just literally bloop, drop it down the toilet and it's good to go. This is where I keep all of your cleaning supplies. You have like Windex, Lysol, wood cleaner, whatever. Please, I can't stress this enough. I provide rags. Use the rags to clean with. I don't want to charge for using the towels to clean stuff with. The towels are for bathing, not for cleaning. Here's your rags, use your rags, okay? But all of your cleaning stuff is down here below the sink, okay? Over here, across from the bathroom are all of your towels. Every unit is furnished with four towels and four hand towels, all right? They're in this drawer. Right here in your kitchen, this is your control panel. This shows you all of your levels and operates all of your basic things. So for instance, your hot water heater, you flip it on, it takes a second to prime. That uses propane. Just know that ahead of time. That'll use propane, not very much. You could go probably a month on the, the tank in this thing and you should be okay with your propane. Um, anywho, but that's your hot water heater and then your water pump. If you're not plugged into city power, or I'm sorry, if you're not plugged into city water, you have to run the pump and that will pull water from your fresh water tank. As it pulls the water, then you're able to run your sinks and run your stuff and you should be good. This right here is all of your levels. This will check all your levels, your propane, the battery, your fresh water tank, the black tank, the gray tank, and the galley ignore. All right, just know that this is your control panel. This is where you turn your hot water heater on and your water pump to get water if you're not plugged into city water, okay? Um, you should have kitchen towels. Guess what? They're not rags either. These are kitchen towels. Use them to dry dishes with or clean dishes, not to dirt to clean the undercarriage of the unit. Please, seriously. Paper towels, every unit comes with a coffee maker. I just asked that if you could do me a favor, hang on to the box, only because they're easier to store. But anywho, every unit does come with a coffee maker. It's not the greatest, but it works. It does its job. Um, you have your silverware right up in here, some bowls. Then in these drawers here, all your cooking utensils are right here, down here, all sorts of stuff. You'll get a list of every single one of those things that you get as you rent your unit. You'll know what you have. Nothing down there. Here's your pots and pans down here. Very basic stuff, nothing fancy. By the way, all the drawers, lift, pull. That's it, that's how you work your drawers, lift and pull. And that's 
a feature because when you're driving, you don't want drawers to come, come flying open. Now, with your utensils and things, please, you are more than welcome to add to the collection, but you cannot take away the power. So your TV, your microwave, your air conditioning has to have power. It doesn't run off of the batteries. That means you either A, have to be plugged into a park cable, or B, you're running the generator. Now, if one of those things are working, then you can use your microwave, you can use your TV, and you can run your AC. And yes, as you're driving, you're more than welcome to use your generator as you're driving. It just uses the fuel from the unit, so just know that ahead of time. But yes, you can turn the TV on, you can use the microwave, any of those things while you're driving, as long as your generator is on. All right, so your microwave is right here, standard microwave, just, I don't know, figure it out. I, I'm not really sure what to say. Your hood light, your hood fan for when you're cooking and doing your stuff. You have a gas propane grill with a nice little backsplash built in. The way that these things work, just use your trusty lighter here. Turn them on to light and then boom. And that's it. Pretty easy. It doesn't have its own built in uh, lighting system. You got to use this. Then always make sure you turn them off when you're done. Fire hazard. Okay. That's it for that. Also over here, I forgot to mention on your control panel is a slide for your living room. Out in, always, I can't stress this enough, please make sure there is never anything, purses, cell phones, laptops, shoes, anything behind these little panels. These motors do not care, especially kids. Don't have anybody sitting on the couch when you put the slide out. You always wanna make sure that stuff is out of the way when you put your slides in and out. Also, you want at least three feet of clearance on the side of each of your slides. And what that means is when you go into a parking spot or a campground, what people forget is a lot of campgrounds are marked with like rebar and they're put right on the sides, right where your slides would be. So you look clear, there's no tree, there's nothing there, but you don't see the little bar that's sticking out of the ground when you go to put your slide out. Please have somebody walk around it if you're not sure. When you put the slide out, make sure nothing, no trees, no bars, nothing is in the way of your slides. And there you go, the slide is out. So now we've got all this wonderful space in the living room, isn't that great? Down here, before I forget, your fire extinguisher, it's gonna be right here by the door, always know where it's at at all times. Your battery disconnect is right here. This could accidentally be switched. I usually always disconnect the units when they're in storage. So you wanna make sure if for some reason you're not getting any lights on or nothing's working, you're like, why well, don't I have any power at all? Check your battery disconnect, make sure it's in the on position. Now next to your battery disconnect is your propane or LPG uh, sensor. If this thing is going off, you should be concerned and everybody should get out of the vehicle and you should call me immediately and let me know. There's also a carbon monoxide in this thing as well. And again, if those things are going off, call me, let me know, and I can walk you through it. It could just be a malfunction. Otherwise, this is where the propane detector is at. Here's the thermostat. This is for your heater only. It doesn't operate the AC unit. I'll show you that in a minute. Just click it on. This does run off of your propane, not electricity. Right above me is the AC unit. The AC unit, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just flip the dials. Colder, cold, cold, colder, whatever. And then on, fan low, medium, high, or if you actually want the AC, flip it on. Now, something that I have to stress is Anytime you go to turn the generator on, make sure that this is off. The reason why is because a lot of things are already pulling power when you flip the generator on, so it's a heavy draw. This is the heaviest draw that's going to come from your power. So just make sure it's off when you turn your generator on and everything should be fine. Your generator is located right down here. All you have to do is just hold down the start button and it flashes. Now, You'll know you'll have power to the unit because your microwave will come on and if the TV has a light on it, the TV will come on and that's how you know you're getting power to your unit. To stop the generator is the same thing. Just hold down the stop button until you hear it completely kick off. And that's it. Your fridge is right here. Freezer, full on freezer, full on fridge, okay? Your control panel is right here. What I do is you just 
two buttons, on, off, real simple. Push this to auto. I just say always leave it on auto. What that means is if you're getting power, it will switch to the electricity and it will run off electricity. If you're not, it will automatically switch to gas. But if for some unknown reason you're drawing too much ampage or too much power and you're like, oh, I just want to use the propane and I don't want to worry about it, then you can just flip it off to gas. But that's it. Pretty straightforward. It takes a few hours to cool. So that's also in the email. If you ever need, if, if you want this cooled before you come pick up the unit, just let me know and I'll make sure to turn it on and it'll start cooling itself. So now that this is extended out, we can easily make this into a bed. Lift these up. Don't stab your kid with them. Not a good idea. You just lift from there. Now, I don't keep any of the bedding down here. I keep the bedding up top, but that's just where it would be. And then you just fold it down. Just be careful with it. Remember, in RVs, never force anything. Take your time. Be delicate with it. I don't want to charge you for stuff that could have been easily avoided. Now, if you have your seatbelts plugged in, or if you have your seatbelts pulled out, it's going to be pretty much impossible to make the bed. So make sure you unplug these or unlatch these, and then your thing will fold down. Okay? There you go. You got a twin size bed. Same way to put it back, just lift it from the bottom, pull from the back, and you're done. And that's it. Make sure you put your armrest back in. Good. Storage up top, all sorts of little cubby holes. Up here, you do have another bed up here. This is also pretty easy. You pull this piece out, and then you have another twin size bed up here. You have your hideaway curtains up here. The other ones as well. And insta bed. All of the linens for these beds should be right here. Each unit comes with six pillows, three twin sets, and three comforters. Obviously the queen set in the back for the queen bed. But there are six pillows for all these beds and then three twin sets, three twin comforters. So the last bed I'll show you is the dinette. The way that this works, this is very tricky. Please be careful. If you don't need to use this as a bed, don't. Use the sofa, use the top. This thing's more of a pain in the butt. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take our cushions out, okay? Pop them out, set them right here. And then these two, take all your cushions out, make sure they're all out. Then from there, you push your button, fold your leg up. I usually always put my leg up against this so that way if I accidentally take my hands away, I don't want to drop it, all right? Then all you have to do is you just kind of slightly lower this, lift from the back, and then it should slide right into place. Just obviously be careful with it. And that should never come off the latches there. Now we can put our pillows back. Sorry. Now make sure when you pull your slides in, same thing, you just push them in and they come in. I cannot stress this enough. I'm going to show you this. Right here, this panel here and the panel on the other side. Please, please, please do not have kids books, purses, phones, anything around these edges. They will get destroyed. It will break the paneling. These motors do not care. They just keep going. The other thing too is if you look at the back of this chair, what will happen is people will be driving and then they slide their chair back and they forget. Oh, so what happens is they put the slide out and they totally forgot about their chair. They bring the slide back in. It will rip the chair. Please, just keep an eye on anything that's in the way of these slides when you put them in or put them out. All right? That's good.
and now the slides are in. Okay, your TV is right up here, nothing fancy. The remote is usually down in the glove compartment, down here, and that's how you use that. It's got a DVD player and a built-in VHS. Pretty straightforward. The only way you're going to get TV is if you're plugged in or the generator is running. And then the last area that I'd like to show is the cockpit. Everything's pretty standard, just like you would drive. It has cruise control, windshield wipers, all those different things. You have your 12 volt right here if you wanted to plug something in. Um, AC, fan, whatever. It also has a, a aftermarket stereo with an auxiliary port on it. So if you've got an iPod or something, you can go ahead and plug that in. That's really handy. Um, your level, your level bubble is right here. Always try to make sure you're as level as possible, especially with the slides. You do not want to be off level because that's not good for the slides. So always try to be as level as possible. Your insurance cards and registration is always going to be down below in a Ziploc bag. So again, that should cover everything for this unit to my knowledge. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you ask.